Well, in news just in, Lesotho Prime Minister Thomas Tabani has resigned from office. Finance Minister Muketi Majoro will take over the reins as Prime Minister. The Council of State, the body that advises His Majesty King Letia III, approved the proposed changes to Parliament. Tabani has been under pressure to resign over a court case in which he and his current wife are suspects in the murder of his former wife nearly three years ago. Well, for more on this story, I'm joined on the line by SABC foreign editor Sophie Mugwena. Thanks very much, uh, Sophie, for joining us. So obviously this was always on the cards and finally it's happened and there's already a new prime minister in play. Yes, we know that uh, some few weeks ago there was a clear indication that uh, the prime minister will resign. And even though there were speculations that... Uh, uh, this might not happen because on many occasions he did indicate that he will resign and it didn't happen. But he had uh, earlier on, I think early January, indicated, down, indicated that he wants to step down in July. But it looks like there was a lot of pressure from his party as the party is divided, but also from the opposition for him to step down. And today, finally, he has made an announcement to his constituents at Habia in Lesotho, in Maser, where he indicated that he is going to step down. And we had yesterday, there were reports that he had already recorded the message that was supposed to be aired on Lesotho National Television, where he was going to make an announcement, but it didn't happen yesterday. So we expect more information today. But what we do know is that uh, the deputy uh, leader of the D.C. party indicated that uh, the state council has already accepted the nomination of Megizu Majoro as the incoming prime minister. Therefore, we now expect... Mwegezi uh, Majoro to be sworn in as the Prime Minister of Lesotho. So Mwegezi is uh, the Finance Minister and he's now going to become Prime Minister, but tell us more about him. Well, indeed, he's the member of the, uh, the, the, the current leading party within the coalition party in that country. And uh, he's seen as a person who will be able, perhaps, to assist the party to lead in government, but... Uh, it is going to be a difficult one because uh, Tom Tabani will continue to be the leader of the party itself, ABC. He did announce that today. In other words, he's stepping down as the head of government because the head of state is the king. And he will continue to be the leader of his party, the ABC. Therefore, the question is, you're going to have these two centers of power. So we'll see what happens. In terms of uh, the charges that have been levelled against Mr. Tabane, does that mean that perhaps uh, justice will be a bit more swift with him? The question is, uh, the fact that there were reports that uh, there are issues that he has put on the table before he can step down. What are those issues? Mm. Will the issues include the current big case in court where he's a suspect, uh, but we don't know. So we'll get more information uh, later today in terms of what were the agreements, even though they may want to hide or to not divulge the agreement. Finally, the information will come out. It is not clear yet whether he has been able to reach a deal with the leaders currently and the person who's going to take over in terms of his case and the wife particularly who's facing persecution. But uh, it is going to be a difficult one because when you look at what's happening in Lesotho right now, the security cluster seems to be very, very, very independent. The police are determined to do their work. And on the other hand, it looks like finally the military in that country doesn't want to be drawn into political matters of the country. They just want to defend the integrity and Basutu in general, but not defend politicians. Therefore, if the situation stays as is, the two most important security institutions in that country continue to be independent, he will 
have to appear before court and to clear his name or if he's found guilty to face serious uh, uh, charges. Yes. So, Sophie, do you think, based on what you've said and based on what you know, do you think that this is going to be a better outcome for the people of Lesotho? It's not clear. Lesotho is very, very unpredictable. I mean, how many times there have been elections in that country, you know, and people were hoping that uh, the elections will bring to finality the issue of political instability and the security instability. SADC has done everything to try and normalize the situation in that country. We know President Ramaphosa is currently the mediator in the matter of Lesotho uh, on behalf of SADC. He appointed the envoy, the former minister, Jeff Hadebe, to continue with that work because now he's currently the chair of the AU and this matter must now go to the AU at some point in time. Therefore, he has chosen a person who can continue with the work. That includes the former Chief Justice, Dikhan Mosenek. But I can tell you, two years down the line or months, we will be again talking about other technicalities. It is very complicated. The, the, the Lesotho matter is very complicated. Others are locating the problem within the constitution of Lesotho, how it was drafted, and during election, the kind of outcome you get gives you problems all the time. They end up having coalition government. And coalition governments by nature are not sustainable. Uh, there's always conflict of interest. Hmm. And at the end of the day, you find the uh, agreement collapsing and people not agreeing. I mean, you look at what's happening in Tuane, in Johannesburg, in Nelson Mandela Bay, and you look at what's happening in Germany as well. Sometimes Angela Merkel is powerful, she's in control. At some point in time, she's weak because the coalition has different interests. Now, the same applies to Lesotho. And people believe that the sooner you implement the reforms that would include uh, the reforms within the Constitution, you will have a better outcome when you have elections. And therefore, Lesotho will be able to be stable. But we don't know. We don't know when will those reforms be implemented. Maybe the new prime minister will implement those, those reforms. But we know how politicians are. Hmm. When something suits them, they will support the move. As soon as they are in control, they are in power, it's an about ten. So we don't know whether he will indeed implement the proposed reforms in that country, you will lead that process. Because at some point in time, uh, the prime minister, the outgoing prime minister, or the former prime minister, was seen as a stumbling block in terms of the implementation of those reforms, uh, which uh, SADC had endorsed and the AU had agreed, and international community and ambassadors in that country have agreed that this is the only solution. So we don't know. Lesotho is a very, very complex country. It's very small, small population. They can be rich if there was stability and, and security stability. We can talk about a country similar to Switzerland with all the natural resources they have, nature, water, and all that. But unfortunately, that fauna and flora in that country and minerals don't benefit the ordinary people because politicians are always fighting in that country. Yeah, that is very unfortunate indeed. But thank you so much for those insights, Sophie Mukwena. She's our foreign editor here at SABC News.